this is not another one of those videos where some guy knows everything there is to know about 3D printers who has 67 of them already. He's gonna tell you that this is the best one until tomorrow afternoon when someone else sends him another one. I bought this one and this is the Chidi X-Max 3. Um, they seem to do several models. This was the biggest one and I figured, well, go big or go home. We, uh, we need to be able to print some pretty large stuff. And so I figured for the extra bit of cash, I would just buy the largest one. I'm gonna kind of go through what we work out while we're doing it. I've watched several other videos on people doing this and it always seems to be guys who already really know what they're doing and they've got multiple other printers. So I have had two other printers to be very uh, upfront. They're both probably six, seven years old and I got them both secondhand and they've been an absolute pain. I've spent more time fixing them than I have actually printing anything only to really find any of the things I wanna print a minimum of 10, 12 hours, sometimes 30 hours and I wasn't prepared to do, <laughs> prepared to spend my life staring at something doing that. And obviously I've got to print in England, which means quite frequently it's cold and I wanted a sealed printer in a box, which is what this one is. And so I was looking at uh, a couple of brands and reached out to these guys, um, let them know what I was looking for. And they came back and said that they reckon this is the right one for us. Uh, none of the other brands even bothered replying, giving us any advice. So this was the one I went with. So thanks, Chidi, I appreciate you actually writing back, good customer service. Uh, so we bought your printer. Now, we're gonna go through this whole process, open it up, do a little bit of an unboxing and um, see if we can get this thing working. We're not gonna probably do the standard benchy type prints. We'll do some of the things that we're planning on, on printing so you can see something a little bit different. Now, will we do a benchy? Maybe, because apparently one of these can do it in like 19 minutes, where my old printer, said a benching was gonna take like seven and a half hours and I wasn't gonna do that for a boat I was gonna put in the bin or melt down to be something else. So um, this is our first YouTube video back for quite a long time. Uh, and we figured why not start on something a bit new. We do a lot of blacksmithing on our channel. Me and my son make a lot of stuff out of steel, a lot of stuff out of timber, but um, some of the products we sell over on our other website require some uh, plastic things to be created. So. Here we go. So while I fast forward through all this video, I thought I'd basically let you guys know where we came to. So it's been about a year since we bought this machine, uh, about a year since we started putting this video together. And I was looking for a plug and play. I'll be very honest. I'm a pretty technical guy when it comes to practical mechanical type things, even electronics and electrical stuff. Just when it comes to the back end, like programming and the software side of stuff, I've never been able to master that. I just suck at it. And this wasn't helpful. Now, half the reason I struggled with my old printers so much was because they kind of required a lot of fettling and messing around. I wanted this one to be very much plug and play, which it was sort of touted as that. Turns out it most definitely, most definitely is not plug and play. So if you're looking for something that you can turn on, find an STL online, and press play and it'll just do it. This is not it. I don't know. I've had friends tell me that their bamboo labs are pretty much that. They are friends who have had 3D printers before. This is not that. Uh, from a guy who just wanted it to work for his business, just turn it on, same as I would with a, a drill or a power hammer or a whatever, whatever other tool, a grinder, I could just assemble it and start using it. This is most definitely not that. There's a, a lot of learning curve. Now, we reached out to Chidi and we reached out, I joined a lot of the forums and asked a lot of questions of people far more experienced than me. Now, I went through the entire process of setting this up, followed the instructions, which seemed very uh, counteractive of themselves. So there's a lot of, it tells you to do certain things that when you try to do, it doesn't work that way online. It just physically isn't like that even simply just setting it up and then downloading the uh, slicer and then it wants to use Cheaty slicer. But it, it, it just, there was a lot of things that took me hours to set up that I should have just been able to press download and run, but it, it didn't, they didn't recognize each other and all sorts of problems like that. Um, now eventually got through all of those problems and found it sort of relatively easy then to drop an STL into the slicer uh, slice it and then send it off to the printer connecting them both to the same wi-fi network allowed me to just basically press go once i found the fluid uh system the fluid sort of system it meant that i could 
I could sort of watch it in real time of what, what was going on. And now I've added the camera, the cheaty camera to it. I can actually physically watch it as well as just watching what it's supposed to be doing because sometimes I'd walk off and it wasn't doing anything. Now you can see from some of these videos that have been running currently, adhesion was instantly a problem. Now one of the things they tout this as is it's supposed to be have perfect adhesion. I did all the things in the first few runs that people told me to do, cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol, cleaning it with soap and water, cleaning it with demineralized water, blah, 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 blah. But they give you a print stick, a glue stick with it, which to me tells me they don't actually expect it to stick. They've got no intention for it to stick because they give you the glue stick. So I now use glue stick all the time. There's no, absolutely no point in doing it. Once in a blue moon, I go back and try it again uh, and it never, never sticks well. Now, even with the uh, glue stick, this thing has heaters and fans and all sorts of stuff in it. One of the first things it tells you when you start printing is don't run it with the box closed which I found pretty funny because uh, they say it'll overheat and it, w it won't work right. I thought the entire point of it was, and the fans and all that sort of stuff was, it was basically a completely self-controlled unit and you just turn it on and it would modulate essentially to keep the temperature where it should be, but that isn't correct at all. You've got to have a quite a significant amount of control over what's going on. So uh, yes, yeah, so it was a, li a little bit of a, a fun and there's been a lot of backward and forward. So, Everybody has their own opinion of what's wrong. So I've had multiple issues with bed temperatures, nozzle temperatures, uh, feeds, like speeds, uh, like the speed of the actual head itself, the speed of the filament coming through, all that sort of stuff. Like the first few, few uh, slices I did, it would suggest something was going to take three hours that I looked at and thought, well, hang on a minute. And I've got a friend with this exact same printer and he would tell me that his one would do the same thing in two and a quarter hours, say. Uh I would check all our settings. They appear to be the same, but it, it made no sense. And and then on the forums, a lot of people, some people actually really came to, to town and helped me a, a great deal. Like over the phone, people in, in other countries even spent a lot of time. And again, it's always their opinion of kind of what will fix it. And it would it would appear to fix one thing, but then throw something else out. And you can see on the screen right now, um, it would appear to be printing absolutely fine. Then it just absolutely crap itself and just start doing whatever it wants for no reason. And the, the adhesion on this particular print was bad. Now, these are one of the main things we wanted to be able to print for our company. And I've probably printed several hundred of them now. And we got to the point when they were all good. They were they were they were fine. But you can see here, there's a lot of places where for just for some reason it just didn't stick, or it would be almost spitting out too much. Uh, filament or it wasn't adhering properly it would kind of ball up on itself and now you ask five different people they give you five different opinions why that's doing it so um i, I would whole spend whole weeks just completely ignoring the machine thinking i can't do it and then things like this they'd be it'd get one good print and i couldn't find my, stop myself watching it because it was just interesting to watch or uh i i would i would think it's going to go wrong any second now we did get to the point where it's now a proficient printer i'm pretty happy with it I do feel like I want to go back to day one again and start all over again, go through all of the testing procedures and try to start all over again. Filament seems to make a big difference, different brands of filament. I've had some that people absolutely raved about and said it was great that for me just wouldn't work. I couldn't I couldn't get it to do what it was supposed to do. And then other, other ones that uh, worked brilliantly. So you can see there, it looked like it had been overheated, but um, they were settings that I'd been told by people to try to get it to that point so that it would, I can't even remember what the reasons were for, but my point is buying a printer like this, uh, it has, it's done me a favor. It's been, it has been really good, but it's also been a lot of hair pulling. Um, and I would have loved to have got somebody who knew far more than me, just get on the phone, someone from Cheaty that would say, okay, give us an hour on the phone with you. We'll go through every single setting for the type of, uh, filament you're going to use and you'll be laughing. But unfortunately it was never as simple as that because there were so many, variables and people love to talk about z height and things like that i must have checked mine a million times uh and sometimes it would it would be fine other times the next time it, would, it wouldn't and you haven't changed anything uh, so it doesn't really make a great deal of sense um, overall i'm incredibly happy with the printer itself it sounds like i'm probably moaning more than i need to but i have been very happy with the printer and I think I'd buy it again for the, for the price, for the fact that they helped me out at the start and that sort of stuff. I think I'd buy it again. And if I had been able to commit more time to it, I'm pretty sure I would have got an even better set of prints out of it. Um, just the, I knew from day one I didn't have the time, which is why I didn't buy a 200-pound printer or a 1,000-pound printer at the time because I wanted something that was more plug and play. Um, 
who knows whether one day technology will be able to do that. You'll just turn it on and it will do its own thing and its connection to the internet and all that sort of stuff will be able to self-calibrate and self Z height and self adjust. This thing's able to test all that, but you have to still set your Z height with a piece of card, which I find quite Neanderthal really considering all its capabilities. So in conclusion, once I altered the feed box, the, the filament feed box in the back, which was a nightmare, horrific design. Worst thing about it, I would say, being on the back, so it's very hard to get to. Even though I built uh, my base for my printer on wheels so I could spin it around, it made absolutely no sense. So I bought a uh, uh, feed uh, roll that is also a, a dehumidifier or dryer and then put some new Bowden tube on it, which I figured about just under a metre is the maximum you can put on there. You, any more than that seems to bind up. But once I did that, separated it up, uh, and found a sort of, uh, sort of final place for it and kind of fixed a few of those little issues, I've, I've had no problems yet. Now, I, like I said, I've been running it a year. i am just bought new nozzles for it now. Uh, finally got a blocked nozzle, and that was for messing around with that Bowden tube, actually, and haven't been able to clear it properly, so I've just bought some more, but I don't think that's too bad. Um, you can do with lubinum pretty frequently, but any mechanical uh, mechanical thing should be up to, kept like that. So like I say, my my uh, sort of final thoughts on it is, would I buy it again? Yeah, 100% would buy it again. Is it worth the money? Yeah, especially as they've dropped the price significantly since I bought it. Uh, if you knew a little bit more than I do about the back end of this sort of stuff, or you're a bit more technical, uh, a bit bit more able to understand kind of how it's talking to the computer and all those sorts of things, I think you'd get far better use out of it than I would and far better technology out of it. Now, Will I buy another one? Probably. There's a point once we've, there's a few other tools we need beforehand. Will I upgrade this one to something that is more, uh, more capable of just doing it without me having to get involved at all? Potentially. Yeah. In the future. But, um, thanks for watching. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely been a good addition to our workshop and, uh, hope if you buy one that you find it the same.